And over the last four weeks, we've been talking through our vision, strengthening relationships with God, His church, and the world. And this morning, we're going to kind of conclude that uh, with looking at basically some real-life application of what I can do to make that happen. What can I do to build my life, but also build the church that God has given us upon the rock, the solid foundation of Jesus, that we could build our church to become a place where people want to belong. We can build our church in, to a place, uh, and understand what I'm saying is not a, 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 a social venue, but instead a place where people come to worship the Holy King, to sing that praise, and to see the work that Jesus is doing. And this morning, I just want to take a minute. We've put together a video. Uh, many of you are here on Wednesday nights. Many of you are serving in different ministries. As we are coming back from the pandemic, some of the things that we've already kicked off are our children's ministry events, our youth ministry stuff going on. Uh, our worship ministry obviously is in full-fledged going with audio-visual and all of that. We're getting ready to um, kick back off our individual small group Sunday school classes, hopefully in the next Next uh, little while, we're getting ready to bring teenagers back so that our senior adults have a place to fellowship with one another uh, as they feel safe and feel comfortable doing so. But this morning, I just I want to show you this video because, like I said, some of you are here on Wednesday night. Some of you are not able to be here on Wednesday night, particularly those of you who are watching from home who are just not comfortable coming back yet. I want you to see real life what's happening at Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. So for the next few minutes, you guys look at the screen.
So as you can see, there's a lot of exciting things happening here at the church that are going on throughout the week, not just what we see here uh, in our morning worship time. And this morning, what I want us to do is, is to really hone in on that strengthening relationships with God, His church, and the world. And we've talked about what each individual one of those look like, but how do we create that here at Mount Pisgah Church? How do we become that here as the body that God has called us to? And so as we wrap up our series this week on vision and discovering Mount Pisgah, I want to take a look at a couple of examples uh, from the New Testament of what God intended for his people and what God intended for his church to look like. Now, let me go ahead and say that there, uh, this is going to be a different kind of sermon for me. We tossed about how to do this, and I'm used to taking a passage of scripture and walking through that and, and preaching through that. And that's not what we're going to do this morning. So I'm a little bit outside of my comfort zone uh, in this this morning, but I want to share with you just a couple of things. Now, I want to clarify one thing about talking about becoming the church that God would have us to be and also the church that people want to be a part of. I'm not talking about here the perfect church because we know that there's no such thing as a perfect church but instead the church that God wants us to be. An anonymous person said one time that if I actually found the perfect church, it would no longer be perfect once I joined it. You Many, many of you have probably heard that before, and, and that's so true because, friends, none of us are perfect. None of us have all of the right answers. None of us know exactly what is going on. And so in reality, I know and you know that there is no perfect church and because there are no perfect people. So with that being said... We do need to find and be the best church that God would have us to be. And we believe here at Mount Pisgah that God has talked to us about relationships. That video that you guys just watched a moment ago was full of relationship building. It was small group time with children, small group time with students diving into the Word. It was meeting physical needs, building relationships with one another through fellowship and, and, and learning. It was giving back. You saw the students painting and working and, and giving back and, and, and doing what they could do, contributing some of their part. And so when we talk about this church, it's not the perfect church, but instead the church that God wants us to be. When we talk about being the church that God wants us to be and being a part of that, we must talk about church involvement because that's a huge part of that. And so this morning, I want us to see four things about church involvement that we could be a part of. I would ask you to evaluate where you are today. Number one, there's the side of church involvement where we neglect it. We say that it's not important. We don't see it as valuable. We don't make it a priority. Some of us fall into that category. I've been there. When I was in college, there were times where I did not make church a priority. It wasn't something that was, if, if another better opportunity came along, I was going to take that opportunity versus coming because it wasn't a priority. Maybe we're in a place where we hop from church to church. We go from different churches our entire life rather than plugging in to a body of believers that God would have us to. Maybe we spectate where we attend, but we never commit to the congregation. We never commit to what God's doing in a body of believers. But the fourth thing I believe, and I pray that this is where we are, is that we belong. This category is for the person that found an imperfect church. And upon realization that he or she was also imperfect, they jumped in with both feet and both hands and their heart and their commitment and their time and their money and their service and their prayers. And they never looked back. Because they wanted to belong. They wanted to be a part of something bigger. And friends, I hope that's what we want for Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. I hope that we want to commit to this body of believers to strengthen relationships with God, His church, and the world. The church is not a place where you go, but a place where you belong. It's a people that you belong to. Hence the strengthening relationships that we live by here at Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. So as we talk about the kind of church that we want to be a part of, we're talking about a group of fellow Christians, a group of fellow believers who are like-minded, who are on a journey towards faith. 
on a journey towards becoming more like Christ, on a journey towards building relationships with one another, towards building relationships with God, and towards building a relationship with the world that's in front of us. Is this church seeking to follow Christ? And is God calling me to join the journey is the question that I want you to ask this morning. Is God calling me to seek, is God calling me to join the journey that Mount Pisgah is a part of? We're going to look at a couple of examples from Scripture this morning to learn what should be characterized as the church that's headed in the right direction. And as we look at those characteristics, we're also going to see that it's not only characteristics of a church that's headed in the right direction, but also of individuals, of people who are headed in the right direction. So in reality, while we're talking about the church this morning, we also are going to be talking about how we can contribute, how we can be a part of what God is calling the church to do right here in Cropwell, Alabama. Indeed, it isn't about us going to church. It's about us being a part of the church. It's not about just becoming a spectator, but it's about jumping in with both hands and both feet and not turning back because we're a part of the work that God is doing. For us here at Mount Pisgah, it's about relationships. And that's how we feel like that we build that with Jesus is through building relationships, strengthening those with God, His church, and the world. So in the balance of the time that we have left, I want us to see two characteristics of a church that is becoming the church that God wants us to be. The first one comes from the book of Acts. The book of Acts, chapter 4, and verse 32. And this is what it says. Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no, no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. Friends, we read here in the book of Acts that there was a cord among the members. There was unity among the body. There was this likening to one another. There was this becoming together. They were all together in one place. They were giving one another of one heart and one soul. And friends, as we read about this, we're immediately impressed with the unity that was going on here. One of the outstanding things about them is their oneness. They were one body. You see, the early church shared three things that contributed to their unity. The first thing that I feel like they shared that contributed to their unity was they were committed to the lordship of Christ. They shared a common commitment to the lordship of Christ. Jesus explains in simple terms what his lordship means. Luke 6, 46 says this, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not, say, do not do what I say? Friends, if I am committed to the lordship of Christ, I'm going to follow what he says. I'm going to do what he tells me to do. I'm going to get a, a part. I'm going to become a part. I'm going to follow the Lord. I'm going to listen to his word. I'm going to try to live the standard that he wants me to live. And this is what the early church had done. And why they were together in one place. It was simple because Jesus told them to. Friends, in the same way, we believe that God is calling us to gather as a body of believers to carry the gospel to Cropwell, to Vincent, to Pell City, to the nations around us. And as we do that, we strengthen relationships with each other. The second thing that brought them together in the unity was that they shared a common commitment towards loving one another. They shared a common commitment towards loving one another. Notice, they shared the the lordship of Christ. They strengthened their relationships with God. And then they loved one another. They strengthened relationships with the church. Acts 22 through 46 describes their commitment to one another. They were a church committed to being the church together, which which meant they were committed to being on the journey with God together. Friends, in every church family, we find different types of believers. We find different preferences. We find different ideas. But we are all on the journey together. And we're all on that same journey. And a church that you and I should want to be a part of is one that is committed to doing the journey together. One who is committed to being in unity. One who is committed to serving the Lord together. God speaks by His Holy Spirit, His Word, and through prayer through circumstances, and his church to reveal himself, his purposes, and his way is the way that Henry Blackaby described that. 
God speaks in different ways, and we have to be willing to follow. Each one of us worship differently. We serve differently. But God still speaks, and God still uses himself. What is God most interested in? God is most interested in our growing in an intimate love relationship with him. He wants us to become more like him in everything that we say and do. So whether what I support is approved or not, whether what I support is done or not, or it is opposed, what God is saying is follow me and do what I've called you to do. Interestingly enough, not all of the disciples who were present at the day of Pentecost were doing the same thing. They were all going out different directions. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says this, He, being Jesus, was buried, and he was raised from the dead. And on the third day, just as the scripture said, he was seen by Peter and then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time. We see that they were not all together. They were not all doing the same thing. They were doing different things. Not everybody's created to work in children's ministry. I get it. Not everybody's created to work in youth ministry. Not everybody's created to sing in the choir. But friends, we have a purpose and God has called us to that. And we must be willing to serve. They were committed to loving one another. They were committed to the Lordship of Christ. But thirdly, they, were commi- they had a common commitment to the Great Commission. The New Testament church had a common commitment to the Great Commission. Strengthening relationships with the world. They were going out into the world. What were the 120 praying about as they gathered in the upper room? Were they praying for the coming of the Holy Spirit? I don't believe so because that had already been promised by Jesus in the book of Acts. I think that they were praying about the task that Jesus had set before them. The task that Jesus had given them to go and to share the gospel and to spread the good news. You see, we see this by the election of Matthias. We see in Acts chapter 1 verse 21 through 26 it says, So now we must choose a replacement for Judas. They're replacing one of the twelve disciples. From among the men who were with them, with us the entire time we were traveling with the Lord Jesus. From the time he was baptized by John until the day he was taken from us. Whoever is chosen will join us as a witness of Jesus' resurrection. They will join us on this journey. So they nominated two men. Joseph called Barnabas, uh, Barsabas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. They were, then they all prayed, O oh Lord, you know every heart. Show us which of these men you have chosen as an apostle to replace Judas in this ministry. For he has deserted us and gone where he belongs. Then they cast lots and Matthias was selected to become an apostle with the other eleven. Friends, we see that they were about being about the business that the Lord had called them to. They were tasked with going forward and sharing the gospel. All God requires is that if we would be used by him to fulfill his calling is not that we be perfect. He doesn't ask us to be perfect. He just asks us to be willing. Friends, are you willing today? You don't have to be the perfect person to fit in, in, in any of our ministries. I said a minute ago that not everybody's cut to sing in the choir. John would probably disagree with me because it's not about can I sing on key? It's about can I make a joyful noise to the Lord, right? Some of us can't carry a tune in the bucket, so we don't come on the stage. Wren, I think, says he's not going to sing in the choir. But Wren loves music. Okay? He loves good singing. Friends, all we have to do is be willing to go on the journey to strengthen relationships with God, His church, and the world. If we're willing to live under the lordship of Jesus Christ, if we're willing to love one another, and if we're willing to fulfill the great commission, he will use us to do so. You say, well, I'm not equipped. I don't have all of the right answers. Friends, a professor in college used to always tell us, and I'm sure you've heard this, it's an old saying of times gone by. God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. Are you willing whether you're equipped or not? All you have to do is be willing. This threefold willingness of the early church enabled them to be of one accord, to be in unity. They were all working together for the same goal. They were on the same journey together. And friends, today I ask you, are we on the same journey together? Are you willing in the same way to do what the the 
church in the New Testament had done to move forward in becoming like Christ. We can move forward in oneness and we can move forward in unity and we can be the body that God has called us to be if we're willing to do so. The second thing that I believe we see here today is that the church had an allegiance to the word of God. The church had an allegiance to the word of God. I want you to flip your Bibles over to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 9, and I'm going to read verse 23. And I want you to see a common verse that we're all familiar with. And it says, And he shall, and he said to all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But I tell you truly, there are some there, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God. Friends, we see here that we must be willing to do what the Word of God tells us to do. We must be willing to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow after Him. In order to become the church that God wants us to be, and in order to become the church that people want to be a part of, we must follow God's Word. You say, well, how do I do that? Well, number one, I think we have to acquaint ourselves with the Word of God. Friends, I've said it before, that means spending time outside of this time, this hour, this, it, maybe you're a Sunday school teacher, maybe you're a small group leader for Kid Venture. It's spending time outside of preparing for that in God's Word. Acquaint yourself with it. Get to know it. I don't love to read. I get it. But I do it because I have to acquaint myself with the Word of God. The second thing we do to be a church who, is, who has an allegiance with the Word of God is sometimes we have to adjust our lives. We have to adjust our lives. Because sometimes it's not that we don't like to read. We think we're too busy. We think we don't have time. We have to adjust our lives. Friends, we have to be willing to, to give ourselves to Jesus. So how do we adjust our lives? We do this by applying God's Word to our lives. We have to first confess our sins. This isn't a fun one. Nobody likes to confess what we've done wrong. Nobody likes to sit and say, well, God, today I did this, 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 and this, and I need you to forgive me of it. But friends, God's word says that we must confess our sins. You say, well, God already knows what I did. Why do I have to tell him? Friends, we have to admit the wrong that we do in order to turn from it. Secondly, by renewing my mind, I have to be willing to give God my mind. I have to be willing to let him bring fresh thoughts. I have to be willing to let him breathe his word on me. I have to be willing to let my thoughts become his thoughts. Number three, by resisting life's temptations. This is probably a hard one too. We are tempted all around us. There are temptations all around us to do things that look good, have you ever noticed that the temptations of the world, they look a lot better than anything else? They look like they taste better. They look like they smell better. They look like they act better. But friends, we must be willing to resist life's temptations. And number four, we have to obey Christ's commands. We have to be willing to be committed to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And so you say, well, Brother Chris... What does all of this have to do with strengthening relationships with God as church in the world? Friends, it has everything to do with it. Because if we're going to be the church that God wants us to be, we have to be committed to Him, and we have to have an allegiance to the Word of God. We have to be willing to be growing in Him. He, we have to let Him use us. We have to let Him let other people hold us accountable. That's why we need the relationships with one another. And then we have to be willing to follow his command to go into the world. The Bible is full of one another commands. Love one another. Do this. Do that. For example, and we are far better off when we obey them than when we don't. They could be summed up as commands to one, fellowship with one another. Two, accept one another. Three, bear with one another. Four, care for one another. Five, comfort one another. 
Six, encourage one another. Seven, greet one another. Eight, honor one another. Nine, show hospitality to one another. And ten, be kind to one another. And then eleven, love one another. God calls us to live in unity with one another. And that's what we're doing in strengthening relationships with God as church in the world. And I would ask you this morning, maybe you're sitting on the sidelines and You feel like God's calling you to get plugged in. Maybe it's in kids' ministry. Maybe it's in student ministry. Maybe it's with teenagers when we start back in October. Maybe there's some way that you can serve in teenagers with our senior adults. Maybe you can come drive a bus for them. Maybe you can go on a trip with them. Maybe you can just love on them. Maybe you can let them love on you. Let me tell you, some of the best times that I've had at Mount Pisgah Baptist Church are when I've gone on trips with senior adults. Because, friends, I learn so much, and I'm loved because of who they are. They love. They love because Jesus first loved them. Maybe you want to serve in worship ministry. Maybe that's where God's calling you to serve. Friends, my prayer is that as we finish up this Discover Mount Pisgah, that we realize that God is calling us to serve. God is calling us to be a part of what he's doing. He's calling us to be a part of his work. And he's calling us to be a part of following after him and being in unity with one another. So friends, will you obey that call this morning? Would you pray with me? God, we thank you so much for today. And God, I thank you for the time that we have to gather here in this place today. And God, just to look at our vision. Strengthening relationships with God as church in the world. And how we live that out. How the New Testament church Live that out, God. By being in common unity with one another. By being in one accord with one another, God. I'm thankful for a church who displays unity, God. There is a unity here at Mount Pisgah Baptist Church that I have not seen in the time that I've been here, God. And it's because of you. It's because of the work that you're doing in and through the people here at our church. God, again, we're not a perfect church. None of us in this room are perfect, and so we're not going to be perfect. But God, we are a church who is striving to become more like you. So God, I pray that you would impress upon us ways that we can serve you. And God, I pray that we would be a church who is in allegiance with your word. God, a church who knows your word, who is acquainted with your word, who's living by your word. God, a church who adjusts our lives so that we can follow after your commands. God, help us be a church who displays that. God, help us be a church who truly is about relationships. God, not for just the sake of relationships, God, but for the sake of loving you, loving others, and loving the world around us. It's in your gracious and loving heavenly name we pray today. Amen.